The BEC pays its respects to the traditional custodians of country throughout Victoria and acknowledges their connections to land, sea and community. We welcome and pay respects to Elders past and present and extend our respect to all Aboriginal peoples watching this candidate information session. Welcome to the VEC's candidate information session for the 2020 local government elections. These elections will be unlike any other Victoria has seen. The VEC is using new ways of reaching out and communicating about the elections to prospective candidates. This presentation provides an overview of the elections. However, it won't answer all of your questions about standing as a candidate. I recommend reading the Candidate Handbook, which is available on the VEC website. In addition to this information session, we are conducting three live interactive seminars during September where you will be able to ask questions. We encourage you to attend one of these seminars. This session covers general information about the elections and how the VC has adapted its election planning in response to the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic to protect our safety, the safety of our community and ensure these elections are conducted in accordance with public health guidelines. I will also provide information about the resources available to candidates, including information and tools to assist you to prepare your nomination form, candidate statement, photograph and candidate questionnaire. It's not until you have lodged your nomination form and paid the nomination fee that you are officially a candidate. I will then talk through key nomination activities and candidate responsibilities. These include the mandatory local government candidate training, making sure you are eligible to nominate as a candidate, the nomination process itself, information about campaigning, and the rules that apply to electoral material, as well as the processes involved in the election itself. Finally, I'll finish with a summary of the key dates for these elections, as well as links to more information. Please note, if you are a prospective candidate for the Melbourne City Council elections, there are specific requirements for those elections which won't be covered during this presentation. The election manager for the Melbourne City Council elections will provide two live online information sessions for Melbourne City Council candidates. See the Melbourne City Council elections page on the VC website for more information. These elections are governed by the Local Government Act 2020, which was passed by Parliament earlier this year. The new Act replaces the old provisions and are supported by the new Local Government Electoral Regulations. It's important to know the legislative basis for these elections, as the Act and regulations include a number of requirements for the VEC, for your local election manager and for candidates. Many of these obligations are summarised in the Candidate Handbook, but the Handbook does not replace the need to become familiar with the legislation. The legislation establishes the election timeline, including the close of nominations at 12 noon on Tuesday the 22nd of September. You can find the timeline in the Candidate Handbook and we will also have a look at the key dates later. The new Act also established postal voting as a uniform method of voting across the state. Councils have previously chosen their method of voting. Most councils chose postal voting and some councils in metropolitan Melbourne chose attendance voting where most voters vote in person on election day. For these elections, all elections will be held entirely by post. Although Victoria has 79 local councils, Three councils will not be going to election this year. Casey City Council, South Gippsland Shire Council and Whittlesea City Council will remain under administration. Elections will be held for the other 76 councils and because many council areas are subdivided into wards, these elections will include 298 individual elections. That's a lot of elections for the VEC to plan and manage and we couldn't do it without our election managers and casual election staff. Each election will be managed by a local election manager. The election manager is the person responsible for receiving and processing nominations, and they will be available during the election timeline to provide information relevant to the election. The election manager also oversees the counting activity and is the person who will declare the successful candidates duly elected. The COVID Safe Election Plan outlines how we will manage the elections in this changing environment and the actions we are taking to deliver these elections. The changes include nominations will be taken by appointment only and social distancing protocols will be strictly observed. Anyone visiting an election office will be required to register on arrival to assist with contact tracing should an outbreak occur. The registration uses your smartphone 
and the information will only be accessed for public health related purposes. There will be additional precautionary measures and equipment to ensure proper hygiene practices and our staff will be wearing face masks where required. Subject to the restrictions at the time and for the particular location or area of the state, we may also require visitors to an election office to have and wear face masks. Access for activities during the election, like extraction and counting, may be capped, although our staff will make sure each candidate has an opportunity to be fairly represented. Specific requirements will be in place for scrutineers observing election activities. These will be carefully explained for candidates and scrutineers. Declaring the results may also look different than previous elections. These arrangements will be regularly reviewed to make sure we apply whatever restrictions are in place at the time and candidates will be updated accordingly. It's important to remember that these steps are being taken to ensure the election process remains safe for everyone. Our local democracy sits at the heart of our community and it's important that we take these steps to protect the health and well-being of everyone in our community. To assist your candidacy, there are a number of resources that are available from the VC. The Candidate Information Kit can be downloaded from the VC website. The kit includes a number of forms, reference material and a copy of the election timeline. You will also find on the VEC website maps and additional information about each of Victoria's 79 local council areas, including previous election results. The maps are especially useful for understanding the electoral boundaries relevant to your candidacy, including the ward boundaries if you are thinking of standing for a local council that is subdivided into wards. The Candidate Handbook is on the VEC website right now. The Candidate Handbook is complemented by the Scrutineer Handbook, which explains the counting process for you and your scrutineers. These handbooks won't necessarily answer every question you have, but they are good places to start and useful references for you to keep during elections. Finally, I will also mention the Online Candidate Helper, which is available on the VEC website and will help you prepare your nomination form, candidate statement and questionnaire. I will show you the Online Candidate Helper shortly, but using it will help streamline the process for preparing and lodging these important forms. As you review the Candidate Handbook and other resources, you will see that the first thing to consider is your eligibility to become a candidate. In order to nominate, you must be enrolled on the voters' roll for the relevant local council. The roll closed for these elections at 4pm on Friday the 28th of August. If you are not on the voters' roll, either through your state enrolment or a council-administered enrolment entitlement, your nomination will be rejected. You must also be qualified to become a councillor. This means you must be either an Australian citizen or a qualified British subject, as detailed in the Candidate Handbook. Please note that while there are a number of entitlements that allow people who are not Australian citizens to be enrolled to vote at these elections, people who are not Australian citizens or qualified British subjects are not qualified to be elected as a councillor and are ineligible from nominating for election. As well as being qualified to become a councillor, you must also not be disqualified from standing as a candidate or becoming a councillor. There are a number of factors that can disqualify a person, including if you are an undischarged bankrupt, if you occupy particular public or administrative offices, if you are disqualified to be a company director, or if you have been convicted for certain offences within the past eight years anywhere in Australia. A full list of the disqualifications is in the Candidate Handbook. It's important to check the eligibility criteria closely, as the requirements have changed under the new Act. One of the most significant changes is that all candidates, including those who are currently or have previously been a councillor, must complete the mandatory local government candidate training. The mandatory candidate training is not delivered by the VEC and you can access the training through Local Government Victoria or your local council. Local Government Victoria is the government agency responsible for administering local government policy and legislation on behalf of the state government and you can find out more information about what they do and access the mandatory candidate training through their website at localgovernment.vic.gov.au. 
It's important to remember that you must have completed the mandatory candidate training before you nominate for election. Remember, it's your responsibility to make sure you are eligible to stand as a candidate. If you are ineligible, but you still lodge a nomination, you are committing an offence. If you find out after you have nominated that you are no longer eligible, you must contact your election manager urgently in order to make arrangements to retire from the election. The VEC, including our election managers, cannot provide you with advice on how these eligibility requirements may apply to your individual circumstances. Once you have confirmed that you are eligible and you have completed the mandatory candidate training, you should begin preparing your nomination form. Nominations will be accepted from 9am on Thursday the 17th of September until 12 noon on Tuesday the 22nd of September. As I previously mentioned, nominations will be made with a relevant election manager by appointment only. The online candidate helper can assist you to prepare your nomination form. You can pre-complete your nomination form and print a populated form with a barcode that can be scanned when it is lodged with the election manager. We strongly encourage all candidates to use the online candidate helper as it will expedite the nomination process. If you have trouble accessing the online candidate helper, a copy of the nomination form is also available in the information kit. If you fill out your nomination form by hand, it will need to be manually entered into the VEC's election management system when you lodge your nomination. When you lodge your nomination form, you must also pay your $250 nomination fee. You can pay the nomination fee by cash or bank cheque. FPOS and personal cheques cannot be accepted. Please remember that your nomination will not be officially lodged until the nomination fee has been paid. A receipt will be provided. Once your nomination form has been lodged, the election manager will review it, and if everything is in order, you will officially become a candidate for the election. After the close of nominations, a ballot draw will be held to determine the order that candidates' names will appear on the ballot paper. When you lodge your nomination with the election manager, here's what you can expect during the nomination appointment. First, the election manager will check the form and make sure it's properly completed. Second, the election manager will enter your details into the election management system. The system allows the election manager to confirm that you are on the voters' roll for the election and cross-check your details, like your enrolled address. If you didn't use the online candidate helper, this process may take a little longer. Then, the election manager will step you through the declaration on the nomination form. This is the declaration you need to make in order to become a candidate, and it is important that you understand and properly complete the declaration, otherwise your nomination will be invalid. Once all the details have been entered into the system, you will be asked to confirm that they are correct by reviewing a quality assurance form. You may want to compare this against your nomination form, especially if you filled out the form by hand. If corrections are required, these will be captured in the system and the quality assurance step repeated. After this, the election manager will receive your nomination fee and provide you with a receipt. Your nomination is not officially lodged until you have paid the nomination fee, so you should not leave this until the last minute. Once all of this is completed, your nomination is finalised in the election management system and you will officially be a candidate in the election. Generally, a nomination will take a minimum of 30 minutes to complete. It will take longer if your nomination form has not been completed correctly. To minimise the amount of time for your nomination appointment, please do make use of the online candidate helper and be ready to confirm your details. Once you are officially a candidate in the election, you may also want to submit your candidate statement and a photograph to be included in the ballot pack mailed to voters. The requirements for the candidate statement and photograph are detailed in the candidate handbook. To briefly summarise the requirements, the statement can be no longer than 300 words and must not contain information that, in the election manager's opinion, is offensive or obscene. If you mention another candidate in the election or your association, endorsement or membership 
with another person, group or organisation, including a political party, you will need to have the written permission of the candidate, person, group or organisation. This will need to be lodged with your statement. You should also pay close attention to the formatting and resolution requirements for your photograph. Wherever a candidate fails to lodge a statement or photograph, the law requires us to print a statement to that effect in place of the candidate's statement or photograph. You can also choose to answer questions in the candidate questionnaire. The questionnaire is prescribed by law and your answers will be published on the VEC website. Questionnaires are also available from the Election Office. Some questions ask for yes or no answers, while others provide an opportunity for free text answers. Again, there are rules that apply to the answers and these are summarised in the Candidate Handbook. We will also indicate where you didn't answer a question or if you did not submit a questionnaire. You can lodge your statement, photograph and answers to the questionnaire at the same time as you lodge your nomination. Or you can lodge your statement, photograph and answers to the questionnaire by email or through an authorised representative. The deadline for lodging this information is 12 noon on Wednesday the 23rd of September, which is the day after the close of nominations. Just like for your nomination form, I strongly encourage you to make use of the online candidate helper to prepare your candidate statement and answer the candidate questionnaire. Copies of the forms are also included in the information kit. In addition to the information printed in ballot packs and the questionnaire published on the VEC website, you may also choose to produce and distribute your own electoral advertising. During your campaign, remember it is a legal requirement for all electoral material to be properly authorised. It's vital that anyone involved in distributing electoral material is also aware of this requirement, which applies to social media and online posts as well as printed material. For situations where an online post is character limited, like on Twitter, the post must include or directly link to an authorisation statement. The Act requires that the authorisation statement includes the name and street or post office box address of the person who authorised the electoral material. The address in the authorisation statement cannot be an email address. Candidates are able to authorise their own electoral material and, while there are exceptions to what needs to have an authorisation statement, the VC's advice is always, if in doubt, authorise. It's also important to ensure that your electoral material is not misleading or deceptive. There are other requirements for specific types of electoral material, for example, paid advertising in newspapers. These requirements are set out in the Act and summarised in the Candidate Handbook. If you have questions relating to the content of your electoral material, please seek independent advice. There are offences for failing to comply with these requirements and the VEC is not able to provide legal advice to candidates or approve your electoral campaign material. Local Government Victoria has also published safe campaign guidelines with information about campaigning in the COVID-19 environment. These guidelines are intended to help candidates understand how to comply with the directions of the Chief Health Officer and stay safe while campaigning. These guidelines are available from Local Government Victoria's website at localgovernment.vic.gov.au. Any questions regarding the safe campaign guidelines will need to be directed to Local Government Victoria. To assist your election campaign, you may also request access to a copy of the voters' roll for the local council area for which you have nominated. There are strict rules in the Act about the access and use of voters' roll information during the election, as well as the destruction or return of the information within a prescribed period after the election. There are heavy penalties for anyone who misuses the voters' roll and you will need to read and understand these rules in order to gain access to the information. Following the close of nominations, the VEC will email instructions on how to request access to the voters' roll to all candidates in contested elections. Access will be provided through the VEC Secure system. This email will be sent to your email address on your nomination form. 
Legislation requires that ballot packs for no more than 35% of voters are to be dispatched on any one day. Ballot packs will be posted by priority mail, but due to the staggered mail out, not all voters in the same household will necessarily receive their ballot packs on the same day. Ballot packs will be mailed out from Tuesday the 6th of October to Thursday the 8th of October. Completed ballot material must be in the mail before the close of voting at 6pm on Friday the 23rd of October. All the VEC's public messaging heading towards the close of voting will emphasise this date and we will also remind voters that local post box clearance times can vary. Completed ballot material may also be hand delivered to the election office up until the close of voting. The legislation also provides an extended period for ballot material to be received through the post after the close of voting. This extended period ends at 12 noon on Friday the 30th of October. Each election manager can accept ballot material received through Australia Post up until this date and it will be accepted if the election manager is satisfied that the vote was completed before the close of voting. Remember, there is no voting on election day for postal elections. As a candidate, you may appoint one or more scrutineers to observe election activities on your behalf. A scrutineer represents a candidate by overseeing the integrity of the relevant election process they are observing. Before a scrutineer can observe an election activity, the scrutineer must complete the appointment and declaration of scrutineer form and lodge this with the election manager. The form must also be signed by you, if you are the candidate who is appointing the scrutineer. The election manager will advise candidates of the arrangements for the extraction and counting of ballot papers closer to the close of voting. It's very important for all candidates to clearly pass on any relevant information about these arrangements to their scrutineers. For more information on the counting processes, see the Candidate Handbook and the Scrutineer Handbook. You should also make the Scrutineer Handbook available to your scrutineers so they can familiarise themselves with the activity or activities they will be observing on your behalf. The declaration of results for the election will take place as soon as possible after the counting has been completed. In light of the COVID-19 requirements, the way each election manager will be declaring the results has not yet been confirmed. Information about the scheduled time and date of the declaration, as well as advice on the relevant protocols for attending or viewing the declaration, will be communicated to candidates and the media closer to the time. While the VEC is aiming to declare the results for all elections by Friday the 13th of November at the latest, the exact date for each local council election won't be confirmed until after counting has been completed. The time between the completion of the count for each election and the declaration will be sufficient to allow any possible requests for a recount or any other unforeseen delays. Accountability and transparency are critical parts for an election, and they don't just apply to the election process. The Act requires all candidates to submit an election campaign donation return to the Chief Executive Officer of the relevant council within 40 days from Election Day. To help you prepare your election campaign donation return, a template of the form is included in the information kit. If you haven't received any election campaign donations and you have nothing to disclose, you must still lodge a return declaring a nil return. After the deadline for receiving returns, the Chief Executive Officer is required to publish a summary of all candidates' election campaign donation returns on the Council's website. This process is monitored by the Local Government Inspectorate, which is responsible for investigating and prosecuting any breaches of the Act. To find out more information about the Local Government Inspectorate, visit their website at lgi.vic.gov.au. The Act establishes a strict, non-negotiable election timeline. It's important to take note of the key dates involved with the elections, which are also listed in the Candidate Handbook. Nominations will open at 9am on Thursday the 17th of September and close at 12 noon on Tuesday the 22nd of September. The election manager will advise you of the arrangements for the ballot draw during your nomination appointment. If you are going to lodge a candidate statement, photograph or answers to the candidate questionnaire, these must be lodged by 12 noon on Wednesday the 23rd of September. 
You don't need to wait until the deadline to lodge this material. You can lodge your statement, photograph and questionnaire at the same time as you nominate. Ballot packs will be mailed to all enrolled voters over three days, beginning on Tuesday the 6th of October. Voting closes at 6pm on Friday the 23rd of October. There is no voting on Election Day itself. It's important that all votes are in the mail or hand delivered to the Election Office before the close of voting. Only votes posted before the close of voting can be admitted for counting. The extraction and counting of ballot papers will commence from Election Day, although arrangements relevant to each particular election will be made. The counting schedule will be provided to candidates before the close of voting. The VEC aims to have all counts completed and results declared by Friday the 13th of November. Although the counting timeline depends on a number of factors, including provision for any recounts that may be required before final results can be declared. This counting timeline is longer than previous elections to accommodate adjustments to the counting locations and processes as a consequence of COVID-19. Some key points to remember. First, remember to confirm you are enrolled and you are eligible to nominate as a candidate. Second, complete the mandatory candidate training before you nominate. Third, remember we are here to help and there are plenty of resources available from the VEC website that can help you. These resources include the Candidate Handbook and Scrutineer Handbook, the contents of the Information Kit, and you can pre-complete various forms using the online Candidate Helper. Fourth, remember the timeline. There are strict deadlines that cannot be changed. Fifth, the COVID-19 pandemic means we are working in an uncertain environment. Our election managers and their teams are doing everything they can to help protect you and our communities. It's important that you adhere to the strict protocols we have put in place to make sure this election is conducted safely and smoothly. And also bear in mind that the environment is changing, so some protocols or rules relevant to your area may change. And finally, standing as a candidate for local council provides a great opportunity to be elected to represent your local community. As a candidate, and if you are elected as a councillor, there are certain legal requirements that you need to be familiar with. For these elections, we have summarised many of these requirements in the Candidate Handbook. On behalf of all of our election managers and everyone at the VEC, I would like to thank you for your attention and congratulate you for your interest in standing for election to represent your local community. If you have any further questions, resources mentioned throughout this presentation are available from the VEC website at vec.vic.gov.au. For further information about the mandatory local government candidate training or to access the state government's safe campaigning guide, visit localgovernment.vic.gov.au. You may also find plenty of helpful resources and initiatives prepared by groups working on behalf of Victoria's local government sector, including the Municipal Association of Victoria, or MAV, and the Victorian Local Governance Association, or VLGA. Our election offices will be open for business from Wednesday the 16th of September, and contact information for your local election manager will be available from the VEC website. If you are going into an election office to meet with the election manager, remember to call ahead and make an appointment. And of course, observe all the strict protocols that are in place to protect you, our staff and our community. And finally, please log on to the VC website and join one of three live interactive candidate seminars that have been scheduled to answer your questions about the process for standing as a candidate in the 2020 local council elections. All the best, and we wish you luck for your election campaign.